So let's go over what was done today. Um, I started off uh, putting, so wanted to start to uh, prepare the rear end for installation into the chassis. Uh, so I bolted on the, uh, the four link brackets on the uh, rear end. Um, there's some bolts that go there, bolt and nuts. And then uh, this is the shock bolt here. Um, this would also be what you would use. And, oh, and then the lower link goes uh, down down here in this pocket. And they say the bottom hole is for better traction. Um, I've also bolted on the um, upper control arm to the rear end. And I'm going to wait to install the lower control arm until uh, I'm ready to put it in because I don't want it just hanging off the bottom there. So that's how I'm going to leave it for now. Uh, then I went over and I installed the spring perches. Now, if you're not using coilovers in the rear, um, like we're not, because this is a base kit, uh, you have to install these spring perches. And I've had these powder coated, they come raw. Um, there, I had to grind this one down a little bit because it was touching, it was touching the frame. And then uh, you have to mark and drill for these half inch bolts. So I don't know. I don't know if the, if this tab was welded in there weird because it's kind of a little bit far that way and you can see how close it, it is there. So I think maybe this tab, like I said, is a little too far that way. Cause this one I didn't have that problem with over here. Um, but this is the one on this side. I'll put it in there. Now, in hindsight, now that I've seen this, because I didn't know, uh, I'd go coilovers in the rear. I would just, and if you look on the website, it's like 500 bucks for the upgraded coilovers in the rear. That's what I would do. It's just easier to install the coilovers. Um, I, I feel like there's gonna be some mess in there. I don't think the ride is gonna be as good with the springs and shocks versus having a coilover set up in the rear. That's just easy to adjust right height because you can turn these, you spin it and it, there's a perch here and then it, or there, right there, and then it goes up so you can adjust ride height. Um, but so we'll see, we'll see how it works. And then they want you to cut the spring perch to get it to, I also think I'm gonna get like some really durable rubber hose and some, you know, maybe some break, something with a, a good, um, almost like a high pressure line and I'll put it on there just so that there's extra insulation uh, to put around the coil spring. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just think that that's going to be weird. Um, just a tip uh, for drilling these holes. I started off in the morning drilling these two and I had two um, uh, drill indexes that I've had that I've gone and kind of you know, you go through drill bits, and so I've had these two drill indexes. And uh, if you, if it's being tough to, if it's tough to drill the holes, you know, you can buy a new drill index so cheap. And I, I was, I don't know, not wasting time, but you know, your your batteries are going on your on your. And you know, I was trying to work between the two drill indexes, and it was just a bunch of unneeded, or yeah. Didn't need to waste so much time. I, at lunch, I went and bought a new drill index for like 25 bucks at Lowe's and the holes on that side were, it went, you know, it went so much easier. So, um, there's another video on my YouTube channel where I talk about that like way back in the day when I did it on like motorcycle forks to drill out a bolt. Uh, and that's when those drill, it's funny because that's when those drill indexes were brand new. Uh, and now that they're, um, you know, they, they're, I think I've added to them and had to throw away some drill bits because they get all messed, you know, they just get used. So it's just cheap, cheaper. You're going to save time. Just buy a new drill index and go and start using that. So unfortunately, you know, sometimes hindsight, you know, 2020. Um, but yeah, that's it for um, that. And then I'm waiting on um, for the lower control arm where the there's a spring perch on the lower control arm. And then there's a, uh, I'm waiting for the seat. Uh, and then I can put that, that in the chassis. And then I'm gonna put the brakes on. They have you put the brakes on before you install it, but I feel like the extra weight is just gonna be 
uh, pain in the ass to do it. So I'm gonna wait. Um, yeah, and that's it. That's it for today. Uh, that might be it for this video. Or for this video. Um, hopefully the next one will be, you know, pretty much this will be a roller. That's 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 what I'm thinking. Um, and then uh, and then after that it is pedal box. Pedal box because I've already done, which really was the next step, is these aluminum panels. The pedal box is after that. So, um, yeah, cool. See you next time. All right, so I just did what I think is it's probably a pretty tedious um, part uh, to to kind of I guess start building the interior up. Is that and that's the pedal box. Uh, if you're using the pedal box, uh, like the Willwood pedal box, uh, or the one that Factory 5 supplies, which they think is the Willwood one, it's probably a little easier. With the one from the donor car, which is what I'm using, um, it's probably the more difficult way to go. Um, and it also depends on the condition of your pedal box. Um, you know, this is just a stamped steel piece that comes you know, that Ford made to go in the Mustang. And it has, it's quite complex in how it's built up and, you know, it's probably as old. I don't know who needs to take pedal boxes out. The only pedal boxes I've ever heard of people rebuilding are like in Volkswagen Beetles and Porsche 911s, like older Porsche 911s where you can easily take the pedal assembly out and rebuild it. Um, I don't really hear too many people doing it. Uh, the only thing, that I know on Mustangs that is uh, a common failure point is the clutch quadrant. Um, and that's this plastic piece here. That's the clutch quadrant. It's plastic and it breaks. So they make an aluminum one. And I've actually had to do that one time uh, on a Mustang, like a 91 LX, which is a similar part. This is from a 96 Mustang GT of this pedal box. Um, which is a little different than the must than the one from the later or earlier car because the earlier car I think this is the better pedal box. It's easier to use. The other one is kind of big. Um, I don't think they have a picture. Oh yeah, they do have a picture. So like that's the one from the the other Mustang, and it's a you see it like is a little bigger, and it actually goes up these tubes that are here, where this one is a little bit more compact and sits just up against this footwell wall here. Um, so yeah, I got it bolted in. And then when you bolt it in, you'll be able to see the holes you need to make. So you, you, there's like a, a plate that's spot welded on the back of the pedal box that has these spacers in it. And so you got to take that off. And then when you take that off, if you can see down in there, uh, it'll sit flush against uh, the this footwell plate and then you can cut out the little the bigger holes as you see fit um, now factory five wants you to shorten cut and shorten the brake pedal I'm gonna hold off on doing that brake pedals are I know brake pedals are pretty important as to uh, they you need to be able to put maximum force in a brake pedal um, and not that I am not confident in me welding it back together, but I'd rather just not do that. Plus, so this is the driver part of me. I want to be able to heel and toe downshift. So heel and toe downshifting, if you don't understand heel and toe downshifting is imagine my hand is, is your, uh, is your foot. You're touching the brake, you're applying the brakes with the toes of your foot and blipping the throttle with your heel or side of your foot. They call it heel and, heel and toe. Sometimes it's more like heel or toe and side of foot now, uh, downshifting. And that's to apply brake pressure while downshifting the car for a corner so that you can exit the corner with the gear you want. Uh, I want to be able to do that. Um, so I'm in, I've bolted the accelerator pedal in and I've shortened the accelerator pedal cause you have to, or it hits this, the four inch tube here. And then I've ordered a new one. So I'm waiting for that to come in 
and then I will put that on and then I will make my adjustments as to how I see fit. Now I think that pedal arrangement right there is going to be fine and I'm not going to need to shorten my brake pedal. Um, it does hit this crossbar here, which I'm going to, so I'm going to put some sort of rubber or some sort of stop there so that it hits against rubber and not metal. Um, but I will also recommend you taking the pedal box. I know as daunting as it may seem, you're going to take it apart and there's all these little pieces, um, but you should take it apart and clean it because uh, it collects a lot of under dash dust and grime and stuff. And um, there's bushings on there and little things. Uh, you should clean all that out. That's what it did. Um, yeah, it takes, you know, some time to do all that stuff. So that's what you gotta do. Um, it also comes with, they call them pedal spacers, these little things, but they don't fit. I don't, they don't fit where the pedals or the accelerator pedal or anything. So I don't know why they call them pedal spacers. But yeah, uh, luckily with, with the later pedal box, you don't have to drill into the, uh, the frame there. Uh, and then that puts you onto a accelerator cable section. So I'm going to also bolt in, I think my, uh, the, um, brake master cylinder here. So I can see kind of the fitment of that. Um, but yeah, that's it for pedal box.